Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we started with the attempt to show that Green's theorem actually works, the fundamental theorem for divergence, by showing that the left side is an integral if the vector field we're considering here is defined as such, the left side equal 2. Now we're going to show that the right side, which means we're going to integrate across all six surfaces of this cube, and we should get the, this very same result, all that should add up to 2 as well. We already got a head start. What we did here was we took the vector field right here, which is defined right there, and multiply it times the area element of the first surface, which is the front side surface right here. Therefore, we have a positive x direction, and the area right here, if we take a small little area element like this, that would then be equal to the change in y and the change in z, so dy times dz. This means we're doing a dot product, which means only the x term will survive, and the x term will be y squared times dy dz. Of course, the unit vectors will drop off. And if we then integrate that, let's first integrate over y, so this is equal to the integral of dz, times the integral of y squared will become y cubed over 3, and we're going to evaluate from 0 to 1 because the change in y will be from 0 to 1 on the front surface. When plug in the lower limit, we get 0. Plug in the upper limit, you get 1 third. So this becomes equal to 1 third, the integral of dz. When we integrate over dz, then of course that will be equal to z. So this is equal to 1 third times z, which goes from 0 to 1, which is equal to 1 third. Yeah, I don't have a lot of room because I need to talk about all six surfaces, so make sure I can get it all on the board. So the first value we get for the front surface is one-third. All right, let's see what we get for the other five. So for the second surface, that will be equal to, now we can be a little smart about it. The second surface will have something pointing in the back direction, so that will be dy dz in the negative x direction. And since we only have an x component here, we only have to worry about the x component here. So that will be the double integral of y squared x hat dotted with dy dz. Of course, that's going to be a negative. So put a sign in there, dy dz in the x direction like that. So we don't have to worry about the y in the z direction because the dA of the back surface only contains the x component. So it looks like it's very similar to what we did before. So this is equal to the, um, hmm, let's see here. Uh, we'll get, You're blocking. Oh, I'm blocking here. So the x disappears, so let's go ahead and write that first. So we have double integral of the negative in front. So let's put a negative in front. Oop, that gets kind of messy here. Negative in front, this negative. y squared times dy dz. And so it looks like we get the exact same result as before, but because of the negative, it looks like we're going to end up with a negative one-third. So this is equal to minus one-third. And it looks like the front and the back surfaces negate one another. All right, so now we do surface number three. On surface number three, we're going to have a y component only because the dA will have a y component, so we're only going to concern ourselves with the y component here. So we end up with the double integral of 2xy plus z squared multiplied times and the dA on the right surface we have a change in x and a change in z and it's pointing in the positive direction so that would be dx times dz like this and now we're ready to take that integral hmm but notice that if we're on the right surface here y is not varying, y is equal to 1, which means we can let y equals 1. So this would be equal to the double integral of 2x plus z squared, like this, times dx dz. So that's because y is equal 1 on the third surface. So let's go ahead and integrate over x first. So that means we end up with the uh, integral of dz times Integrate this with respect to x, we get 2x squared over 2. Integrate this with respect to x, we get plus z squared x, evaluated from 0 to 1. So if we plug in the lower limit, we get 0. When we plug in the upper limit, we get 
the integral of dz times, that would be 1 plus z squared. That we can integrate because it's easy with just dz, so this is equal to z plus z cubed over 3, evaluated from 0 to 1. Plug in the lower limit, we get nothing. Plug in the upper limit, we get 1 plus 1 third, which is equal to 4 thirds. So, so far, we end up with 1 third for the first surface, negative 1 third for the second, 4 thirds for the third surface. Now we're ready to attack the fourth surface. Okay, the fourth surface will not be the negative of the third surface because on the left side, y will be equal to 0. So, since it's not equal to 1, this things, things will change just a little bit. So, this is equal to the double integral of, again, we have the y component only because dA will be in the y direction only. So, we have 2xy plus z squared multiplied times the negative, because it's now pointing to the left side, dx dz. Like this. But remember, on the left side, y is equal to 0, so y goes to 0. This whole part of that disappears because y is equal to 0. So this is equal to negative times the double integral, we can't forget about the negative, times z squared dx dz. Now let's integrate over, it doesn't matter which one we do first, let's do x first. So this is equal to the integral of dz times... When we integrate this with respect to x, we get z squared x evaluated from 0 to 1. Plug in the lower limit, we get nothing. Plug in the upper limit, we get z squared. So this is equal to the integral of z squared dz, which is equal to z cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to 1. I forgot my negative somewhere. I, I got to keep sending my negative across like this. This is negative. And plug in 0, you get nothing. Plug in 1, you get negative 1 third. So this is equal to minus 1 third. So, so far, we have integrated over the four surfaces, 1, 2, 3, 4. We got 1 third, negative 1 third, 4 thirds, and negative 1 third. So when you add those four together, so far, it's equal to 1. Two more surfaces to go. Surface number 5. We have the double integral. Now, on surface number 5, we're pointing directly up. So we're in the z direction, so we only need to consider the z component of this because the x and y components will not survive when we do the dot product. You don't have a z component there. So it'll be the double integral of 2yz multiplied times the dA in the positive z direction. That means y changes and x changes, so we have dx times dy. All right. Let's see here. Can we simplify things? Well, at the top surface, z is equal to 1. So we can take z, turn it into a 1. So this is equal to 2, because we can pull the 2 out, times the double integral of z is 1. So we'll only have y left with dx dy. All right. So let's go ahead and integrate over x first. So this is equal to the integral of dy. We can't forget the 2. And times, well, uh, we have y times x, evaluated from 0 to 1 for the x. Plug in the lower limit, you get nothing. Plug in the upper limit, you get y. So this is equal to 2 times the integral of y dy, which is equal to 2 times y squared over 2, evaluated from 0 to 1. The 2's cancel out. We end up with just simply equal to 1. All right, so now notice that so far when we add all of these up, the five results, we get 2. So the integral over the sixth surface better equal 0, otherwise the left side doesn't equal the right side. So let's try. The sixth surface, again, it's only going to be in the z direction, so we need the z term only, 2yz, multiplied times the negative dx dy. Why negative? Because on the sixth surface, the unit vector dA is pointing downward. Okay, at that point, notice that at the bottom surface, z is equal to zero. Well, since z is equal to zero, I need to replace this by zero. That means this whole thing is equal to zero. 
and we don't have to integrate. And so now we know that if we sum them all together, if we sum 1 through 6, we get 1 third minus 1 third. So we have 1 third for this one, minus 1 third. We have plus 4 thirds. We have minus a third. We have plus 1 and plus 0. Notice that these cancel out. 4 thirds minus a third is 1, plus 1 is 2. So since that equals 2, which is the exact same result we got on the previous video, when we evaluated the left side, we've now shown that the left side equals the right side, which means that at least in this example, Green's theorem does seem to work, that the volume integral on the left side of the divergence of V equals the surface integral of the vector function times dA. And that is how we show that Green's theorem can be a very practical term. Now, or theorem, I should say. Now, notice, if the left side is difficult to integrate, you can then simply do the right side and get the same result. If the right side is difficult to integrate, you can go to the left side and do that one. So, sometimes it is really handy to be able to shift from one side to the other side if one side is easier to calculate than the other. And that's why Green's theorem is such a practical theorem. And that is how it's done. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Sometimes they're both difficult and you don't know which way to go. Might as well just pick one and do it.